it's important when we assemble the feed mechanism to have the drawing in front of us at all times. The drawing I'm working off of is drawing number M62463-3. It's a number two feed screw mechanism. I have laid out all the parts that will be used in this assembly in front of me. As I install the seal, part number 35144, there are two of them. It is very important to insert them through the space and then we use a special tool to make sure that it's driven all the way in. It's important to make sure that it's centered and you use the plastic mallet and drive the seal all the way in. You repeat this process on the other side and here's a view of what it should look like when you're done. Both seals are fully inserted. The next step, we're going to build the input shaft by installing the worm gears, which there are two, as well as two spacers and a bearing. There's a number three taper pin that must be inserted through the worm gear and through the shaft. When the part is received, these parts are pre-drilled. However, you need to use a number three tapered reamer to make sure that the drift pin will go down through the gear and the shaft and be flush on the valley between the gears. We use a drill press to accomplish this. It's important to go slowly and deliberately until you find the right depth for the taper. After you install the first worm gear, you install a spacer and then a bearing and then a second spacer. The purpose of these is to keep the gears at the right distance from each other so that they mesh properly with the gears that are going to be installed on the feed screw shafts themselves. Make sure when you put the number three taper pin in through the gear that it's in the proper orientation and that you've reamed far enough to get that taper pin so that it is almost flush with the valley on the gear. You can use a drift and a hammer to drive it all the way in and ensure that it will not fall out during operation. Repeat this process for both gears. As you can see, the taper pins are flush with the valley on each worm gear on both sides. The next step has us installing this input drive shaft in through the gear housing. As you can see, we have left one side exposed. The purpose for this is to use two adapters. One is a bronze back plate and the other is a bronze bushing that are going to slide into the opening on that side of the feed mechanism. The end bearing has two set screws on it. As you can see there are two dimples in the shaft which are going to line up with the set screws on the bearing. But first the second bronze adapter piece has to be installed. The bearing will fit into that space. The bearing has two set screws 90 degrees apart. We remove these set screws using an Allen wrench and put high strength Loctite on the set screws before reinstalling them on the bearing sleeve. Once the set screws have been put into the bearing sleeve, the bearing can then be fit onto the shaft so that the set screws line up with the dimples and tighten down to prevent the bearing from moving during operation. At this point, the bearing must be seated inside the adapter. This can be done by gently tapping on it with a plastic mallet. And when you feel the bearing bottom out against the back adapter piece, stop. At this point, the shaft is properly located. You can install then the gasket and the end cover on that side of the housing. Do note that the gasket should be flush with the outside of the bearing and that the end cover just keeps those in place. There's four qu quarter 20 screws that you will tighten with your 7 16th wrench. The gasket will expand slightly, but this is no problem. As you can see, the worm gears are centered above the bronze bushings that the feed screw shafts are going to go through once installed. The drive shaft also has a bearing on this side. This is to keep the shaft located properly in the housing. We also use Loctite on the inner and outer race of these bearings so that it does not spin inside the housing as it is a slight interference fit. We use a special sleeve that lines up with the inner race of the bearing and we tap it in until it seats itself. At this point, we install the end cover. However, this end cover has a lip seal. 
As these are sealed bearings, you want the lip seal facing outwards to prevent dust or farm material from getting in to the bearing. We use an arbor press to locate the seal and push it in to the end cover, as you can see. We slide it over the shaft and then secure it to the gear housing with four screws. They're number 10 screws, 24 threads per inch, approximately 5 eighths inch long. Flathead screwdriver can tighten these down sufficiently. At this point, we install the retaining washer for the packing ring, one on each side. They should slide right into place, and then we install the face plate. The face plate is installed and held in place using six quarter 20 flathead cap screws. Once the screws are tightened, we're going to install the packing rings. As you see, these Teflon packing rings are cut at a 45 degree angle so that when you install them, there's no overlap. They fit securely and precisely into this space on the faceplate. At this point, we install the bronze gears. There's one for each feed screw. There's a left side and a right side. It's important to not get these mixed up. We make sure that the bronze gear meshes with the worm gear on the drive shaft as we slide the appropriate feed screw from front to back through the bronze bushing and then through the gear itself. If it does not fit smoothly through the bronze bushing and into the gear, you may need to ream the bronze bushing with a 1.005 straight reamer. As you can see, once it's fully inserted through the gear, there's slots on both the gear and the feed screw shaft. You want to line these slots up and install the key washer onto the back of the gear. This will keep them rotating together. The right hand feed screw, which you're looking at now, has a regular right handed thread. Using a three quarter inch wrench, we are going to tighten this bolt to keep the key washer in place securely with the gear. They should rotate smoothly with minimal lash. Now we install the other feed screw in the same manner that we installed the first feed screw. It should slide in smoothly through the bronze bushing from front to back. The ends of the feed screws are approximately 180 degrees apart at this point, which will allow them to drop material evenly. So after inserting the bronze gear on the left-hand side, part number M2237, and putting the key washer in place once the gear and the shaft are aligned, it's important to note that this, this bolt that secures the key washer is a left-handed thread. As you can see in the video, I'm turning it left to tighten it. Since the screws are going to rotate in the opposite direction from each other, both in towards the middle, as you see when I'm rotating it, that will prevent those two screws from backing out during operation. Once this is completed, we can then fill the gear housing approximately 75 to 80 percent with the appropriate grease. It's important to rotate the input shaft during this process to make sure that the gear are receiving the right amount of grease and it's distributed evenly. Then we add more grease manually to make sure that over time there's still plenty of grease in there to prevent wear of the gears. Wipe off the excess. Once the excess grease is removed, we install the back cover. The back cover bolts in place and is held in place by six five sixteenths by one inch long bolts. At this point, we have two bolts that are actually considered more set screws. They're three quarter inch diameter by two and a quarter inch long. And then we also have a lock nut that will be fitted onto these bolts and they will be threaded through the back cover and threaded down fully until they touch the back of the bolt that's securing the key washer to the gear. Once this, this bolt is touching that, you're going to back off approximately one half turn on the three quarter inch bolt and then tighten the lock nut down against the back cover. You will need a one and one eighth wrench and a three quarter inch wrench to accomplish this. Once you tighten the nut, you want to check the rotation of the screws. That nut and bolt are going to prevent the screws from wobbling 
during operation. They also prevent the nut that holds the key washer to the bronze gear from backing out. At this point, we install the Zerk fittings, which are going to provide grease to the bronze bushings, which have grease screws machined into them. This will lubricate the feed screws during operation and should be done periodically. Consult your manual for details. Three or four pumps of the grease gun should be appropriate. One last thing, make sure that you check that the key fits onto the input shaft. Now we're complete and we're ready to install the feed mechanism onto our mill. Thank you for watching.